Hi everyone, we got another update about the GMAT focus edition and this update pertains the GMAT scoring range. Right. There is a lot of discussion in the forums about what is going to be the scoring range for the new GMAT, what will be the scoring range for the individual sections. All of that has been put to rest. We have official information about what the new scoring range is all about. In this video, we are going to be looking at section wise scoring range, overall scoring range, what is the validity of the score, to how many schools can you send your free scores and the likes. Right? There been a lot of good news on the free score reporting and about how your past is not going to haunt you going forward. Let's take a look at the section wise scores. What is going to be the section wise score for all three sections, quant, verbal and data insights. The scoring range is going to be 60 to 90 points and it's going to move in intervals of one point. So test taker score could be 84, 85, 86, so on and so forth. Quick recap at this point. Let's take a look at the duration for each section and the number of questions to be answered for each section. For the quant section, it's 21 questions to be done in 45 minutes, a little over 2 minutes per question. Verbal section, 23 questions in 45 minutes, little under 2 minutes. It appears as though you've been given more time per question in the verbal section. But keep in mind, sentence correction is not a part of the verbal section, which is a set of questions which you could have answered in quicker time, as in like between reading comprehension and critical reasoning and sentence correction. Sentence correction is the one where you gain time. That is remote. Therefore, they basically made adjustment to that extent. Lastly, the new section, data insights, you have to answer 20 questions in 45 minutes. That's about two and a quarter minute per question, right? So these are the three sections, score 60 to 90 and moves in intervals of one. What happens to the overall score? Is it going to be the same as the old test, which is between 200 and 800? No, there is a change there too. GMAT has brought about this change essentially to tell the business schools that which score you have taken because the GMAT score is valid for five years. So there is going to be a period of time when the old GMAT and the GMAT focus edition scores are both going to be valid scores for a test taker. So by looking at the scores, the business school should be able to say, hey, this student has taken the focus edition. This person has taken the older version, right? So to make that distinction, they've added five points to every score that is possible, right? So essentially in the old GMAT, the score range used to be 200 to 800. Now it is 205 to 805. So your score is going to be a 745, 755, 765, so on and so forth. So all total scores end in five, right? This is something to keep in mind. What is the weightage of each section? In the old score, if you remember, only the quant and verbal counted toward this 200 to 800. IR and AWA were standalone scores. They were not a part of this. In the new focus edition, AWA is not there. IR plus data sufficiency is what is called as data insights. That IR component is now going to matter in this 205 to 805. All three sections, quant, verbal, and the data insights carry equal weightage, right? One third, one third, one third is the weightage of all of these three. Few more pointers, things that were there in the old edition, are going to continue in the focus edition, there's going to be a penalty for not completing the test. For instance, out of the 21 questions in the GMAT quant section, you managed to attempt only 18 questions and you ran out of time, then essentially there's going to be a penalty attached for the three questions that you did not answer. If you did not answer five questions, the penalty is going to be greater. So the penalty is going to be proportional to the number of questions unanswered. So it's in your interest that you answer all questions in all of these sections. So this continues from the older version, this aspect of it. Now, we were able to send five score reports, so four scores to five schools free of cost when it took the older version. Does that continue even now? Yes, it does. But before that, let's look at the validity of the score. The validity of the GMAT score continues to be the same five years as it was for the older edition. We could send scores to five schools. These are called free score reports to five schools. The only catch in the older version is you had to decide what those schools were before you took the examination. So you haven't seen your score. You do not know how good, bad, ugly it is. And you have to take a guesstimate as to, hey, I'm likely to get a 710, a 720. Therefore, I'm going to apply to the school. And where do you guess that from? Based on your previous mocks. They made life easier on that count. Now, you can send the same scores to five schools, free of cost. That continues. But when do you have to decide the schools for which you're sending? Not before the examination. After the examination, not even immediately after the examination, they give you adequate time. They give you time up to 48 hours, not from the time you completed the exam, from the time your official score will be available on MBA.com. Typically, official scores become available on MBA.com seven days to 20 days from the time you took the test. So let's say even if it is available to you three days from the time you took the test, you took the test, 
three days from the point in time you have your official score and another 48 hours so about five days from the time you have seen your score you can ruminate about it you can say do i want to send it to which schools can i send it I've got a 720 let me i've got a 720 fine now let me send it to these five schools you can desire it on that count and then do it so they give you adequate time to make meaningful choices it's no longer a blind choice right basically it's basically decided okay i got a 690 710 and 730 in my mocks so i'm likely to get a 710 so which school should i send no no such guessing guessing right now you have adequate time you can speak to your tutors you can speak to your mentors you can speak to your uh, coaching people you, you can find out what schools will best suit for that particular score and then you can send it to those particular one the some more good news it's, right the good news continues here in the earlier version right essentially let's say i took two gmats took one gmat in march 2023 scored a 710 took another gmat in april 2023 scored a 740 when I took the 710, I accepted the score because it was a good enough score. I decided I could do better. So I did a second GMAT and got a 740. When I report my 740 to any school, we are talking about the older version, those schools will get to know your 710 score if you had accepted it. If it cancelled it, they will not know. But if it accepted the score, they will get to know it. That no longer exists. Let's say you took three GMATs. GMAT 1, GMAT 2, GMAT 3. GMAT 1 was 675. GMAT 2 is 725. GMAT 3 is 765. You can say, hey, send my GMAT 3 score to business school A. GMAT sends only one score report to that particular school. It's not going to talk about any previous attempt of your GMAT. You can select score report 2 to school Y. Score report 3 to school X. You can decide which one goes to which school. And GMAT reports only that score. Your past is completely as in you decide you have lot more control about which scores go to which school for example there could be a school for which the overall score might matter there might be a school for which tom tomming your quant score might matter right the marginal difference in your overall score something might be a 765 another might be a 745 745 is the one where you probably got a perfect 90 in the quant section and you want to show that 745 to that school so you can decide that 745 score goes to school x in another school where the overall score might matter you might say 765 goes to this particular score so a lot more control is available and these are welcome things to make a test taker's life a lot easier. Best wishes.